This publication is titled Comparison of the Behavioral Effects of Mescaline Analogs Using the Head Twitch Response in Mice. Mescaline can be found in nature in two types of cacti. These are the peyote buttons, which contain 1 to 3% mescaline by weight on the left, and San Pedro cactus on the right, which contain much less mescaline, 0.21 to 1.8%. The structure of mescaline is quite simple. It is a substituted benzene ring in which it has methoxy groups coming off of the 3, 4, and 5 position, followed by a 2-carbon chain where it has an amine coming off of it. Some of the background of this publication comes from work done by Alexander Shulgin. Alexander Shulgin is an American chemist and pharmacologist who synthesized and ate many drugs that he made. He wrote a famous book called PCAL. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It is an amazing read. Here were some of his discoveries in the book. The compound in the upper left-hand corner is mescaline, what the focus of this publication is about. Its active dose in human beings is 178 to 356 milligrams. As we can see, the compound to the right of mescaline is called TMA. This has an active dose in human beings of 100 to 250 milligrams, indicating that it is more potent because less of the drug is going to produce a psychedelic effect in human beings. Structure these compounds are very similar except for one thing. There is a methyl group in TMA, one position away from the amine, that mescaline does not have. So it is this methyl group that is causing the potency of the drug to increase. If we then look at TMA versus TMA2, the compound to the right of TMA, this is an active dose in human beings of 20 to 40 milligrams. The structural reason for this is that the methoxy in the third position has been moved to the second position and thus moving the third methoxy to the second position increases the potency of the drug. If we now look at what happens going down, we see something quite interesting also. Going down from mescaline to escaline, the potency of the drug drastically increases as only 40 to 60 milligrams of escaline produce psychedelic effects. From a structural standpoint, Mescaline and escaline are very similar, except for one change in chemistry. It's that instead of a methoxy coming off of the fourth position, there is an ethoxy coming off of the fourth position, and this drastically increases the potency. If we then go down to proscaline, the potency of the drug increases by a little bit as it only takes 30 to 60 milligrams to produce psychedelic effects. Structurally, escaline and proscaline are very similar. The only difference is that in the fourth position, they have elongated the carbon chain coming off of the ethoxy group to make it a propoxy group, a three carbon chain. And thus we can say that one carbon addition to the fourth methoxy position also increases the potency of the drug. The purpose of this publication was to evaluate all nine mescaline analogs in rodents to see which ones would produce the strongest effects, which would either approve or disprove what Alexander Shulgin proposed in PCAL. Rodent behavioral models are routinely used to evaluate the structure-activity relationship of psychedelic drugs, but there is little to no investigation of mescaline analogs. The goal in this publication is to investigate the behavioral effects of mescaline and several analogs using the head twitch response, or HTR for short. Serotonergic psychedelics induce the HTR. A brief paroxymal head rotation in rats and mice via activation of the 5-HT2A receptor. So basically, this is where the animal's head will twitch due to activation of the serotonin 2A receptor, which is known to produce psychedelic effects. Let's look at the first findings of the publication that the researchers saw. The first drug injected into animals is in panel A, which is mescaline. This graph has two axes, an x-axis, which measures time, and a y-axis, which is measuring the head twitch count per two minutes. The idea here being that a stronger drug activating the serotonin 2A receptor would cause more head twitch responses. It's interesting to notice that 12.5 mg per kilogram is producing stronger effects than a higher dose of 25 mg per kilogram. 
This could be something of possibly a solubility issue of the drug into their vehicle. If we look at escalin now, which is when we take the fourth position methoxy substituent and put an ethoxy substituent on it, we see a much stronger effect than mescaline coming from six milligrams per kilogram of drug. This is producing much stronger head twitch counts at a time point of 30 minutes and before. I remember Shulgin kind of had this idea when he said elongating that chain made the drug more potent by his findings in PCAL. As we elongate the chain even further on proscoin, we see similar effects. Elongating it from an ethoxy to a propoxy actually doesn't increase the potency of the drug too much. The next finding in this publication comes from the researchers injecting the drug TMA into the rodents. We can see that at 12 milligrams per kilogram, the drug is producing the strongest effects because it is having the most head twitch counts. When we go from TMA to 3CE, we do so by changing the fourth position methoxy group to an ethoxy group to give us 3CE. We see the effect of this drug has much stronger effects as the head twitch counts have gone up by a decent factor. When we elongate that chain even further, changing it from an ethoxy to a propoxy group in 3CP, the effect of the drug actually drops off and is quite similar to that of TMA. This would suggest that elongating the chain from methoxy to ethoxy does increase the potency of the drug, but as you increase the chain length to a propoxy group, the effect doesn't increase. In the last series of experiments in this publication, the researchers have taken the drug TMA2 and its analogs and injected it into the animals. Let's revisit the idea that TMA differs from mescaline in that it has a methoxy group in the second position instead of the third position. And we see the effect of the drug is pretty strong. Initially, it has a pretty high head twitch response initially, much higher than that of mescaline. When we go from that fourth position of methoxy group to an ethoxy group in the fourth position, we get the compound MEM. And we see the activity of the drug actually drops off just a little bit, indicating that this substitution does not make the drug more potent. When we elongate that chain even further, changing it from an ethoxy to a propoxy group, we see the effect of the drug drop off rapidly, indicating that having a methoxy group in the second position while elongating the fourth position, methoxy to an ethoxy to a propoxy, actually decreases the potency of the drug. The research of this publication have decided to present their data in a large table listing the compounds, a one-way ANOVA, which tells us whether or not the data is statistically relevant, the time duration, the dose in milligrams per kilogram, the N value, which indicates how many animals were tested at each dose, the head twitch counts mean, plus or minus the standard error of the mean, which indicates how many head twitch counts were occurring at the time point of 30 minutes. Then we get to something called an ED50. This tells us the dose that is producing half the maximal response of the drug at 30 minutes. This is listed in milligrams per kilogram. They've also decided to express it in the furthest right hand column in terms of micromoles per kilogram. It can be confusing to look at data in this manner. So in the next slide, we'll talk about how do we interpret the data. Let's look at the ED50 values of mescaline and its analogs to develop some general trends in terms of structure activity relationship. Mescaline has an ED50 value of 26.3 micromoles per kilogram, whereas TMA, the drug to the right of it, has an ED50 value of 13.6 micromoles per kilogram. Because TMA's 13.6 is about half that of mescaline's 26.3, we can say that TMA is about two times more potent than mescaline as a drug. Structurally, all we've done going from mescaline to TMA, as we talked about before, is putting a methyl group one carbon away from the amine. Thus, from a structural activity relationship, we can make the following statement. 
methyl addition to one carbon away from the amine increases the potency. Let's now look at what happens when we go from mescaline to escaline to proscaline, in which we are taking the fourth position methoxy group and elongating it to an ethoxy group in escaline and a propoxy group in proscaline. We see that the ED50 value of escaline is 11.2. This would be greater than a two-fold increase in potency of the drug going from mescaline to escaline. If we now compare mescaline to proscaline, we see that changing that fourth position methoxy group to a propoxy group goes from an ED50 value of 26.3 to 8.09. This is greater than a three-fold increase in potency of the drug. Thus, we can make the following trend statement. One carbon addition to the fourth methoxy position increases the potency of the drug. Lastly, we can look at what happens when we change the third position methoxy group and put it on the second carbon. Let's look at going from 3CP to MPM. We see that moving the third methoxy position to the second position decreases the potency. But there's actually one exception to this. It's going from TMA to TMA2. So what we can gather or conclude is that the most potent drug is proscaline, closely followed by 3CP, closely followed by 3CE. And we kind of now have developed a structure activity relationship looking at how making derivatives of the drug increases its potency.